Have you ever heard of a company called Look, have you ever heard of a company called Diageo? You ever heard about this company? It's um, it is a global company that have a lot of brands like Johnny Walker. Guinness, Tanqueray, Bailey's, Smirnoff, Captain Morgan, Don Julio, Ciroc, Casamigos, J&B, Ketel One, a full portfolio of 200 brands of whiskeys, other whiskies, vodka, wine even, beers, Guinness, you know. And uh, listen, they, that's the chair, the executive CEO, you know, they make a ton, ton, ton of money. Oh, did you see the brands? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are the brands? Our brands. Where was it? There you go. Look at this. Look at this brand. Uh huh. Ciroc. Born from generations of winemakers and distillers, master dealer Jean Sébastien Robiquet went against the grain in 2003 to create Ciroc. Hmm. Luxury vodka. That's interesting. Oh, you thought it belonged to, to Didi? <laughs> Let me tell you something. All right. Uh, all right. Let me read something to you that happened uh, in January of this year. Sean Didi Combs, who accused Diageo, uh, Diageo, of racism, withdraws his lawsuit against the spirit's giant. Combs sued Diageo in May, saying the company didn't make promised investment in Ciroc and De Leon and treated them as inferior urban products. Yeah, De Leon, De Leon Vodka or Cognac, I don't know. He's another brand of that is associated with Didi, but that actually is part of that group. The rapper and entrepreneur Sean Didi Combs has withdrawn his lawsuit, blah, 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 as part of a settlement with the London-based spirit giant. Combs and Diageo have now agreed to resolve all dispute between them. The two parties said in a statement released Tuesday, Diageo now the sole owner is now the sole owner of Ciroc Vodka and the Leon Tequila. Two brands Combs had part owned and promoted in the past and has no business relationship with comms going forward. Huh. 
comes sued Diageo last May, saying the company didn't make the promised investment, blah, blah, blah. Com, who signed a deal to promote Ciroc in 2007 and purchase, purchased De Leon with Diageo in 2013, said the neglect worsened after Diageo bought two competing brands, Don Julio and Casamigo. Diageo owns more than 200 brands, including Guinness Beer and Tanqueray Gin. Combs, who is black, also accused Diageo of racism. In court feelings, Combs said Diageo leadership told him race was one of the reasons it's limited distribution to urban neighborhoods. Combs was also told some Diageo leaders resented him for making too much money. Diageo denied the, these, those claims. Uh, Diageo accused Combs of resorting to false and reckless allegations in effort to extract additional billions from the company. Combs' reputation took a serious hit after the lawsuit was filed. In November, he was sued by R&B singer Cassie. Who was subjected her? Who is? Who said he subjected her to years-long abusing relationship that included beatings and rape? Combs settled the lawsuit with Cassie. Hmm. And that a thing that you sue? You a billionaire, right? So you believe that you're too big to fail. Right, you a billionaire. So now you sue, you a billionaire, but you sue people who are multi, ten times, multiple times, way more billionaires than you. You a small billionaire. They are like thirty billion, a hundred billions, etc. Right? You sue them. You accuse them of racism. And pop, you get all of a sudden X sue you. I don't. I'm not saying it has something to do, but and then the feds and all of a sudden the machine is against you. Well, my boy, <laughs> listen. Let me tell you one thing. In 2001, I sue my label. My manager sue my label for money that uh, she was supposed to receive for something, etc. And at the same time, I find a way to escape my label in 2001. And you know what happened after that? I was completely blacklisted from everything music in France. Every label was telling me, yeah, we love your music, we wanna work with you, but you know what? Uh, because of, you know, we are friends with such and such, so yeah, we cannot sign you. But you just said you love my music and you want to work with me. Yeah, but because of such and such, we cannot sign you and we cannot really work with you. But why? You said you love what I do and yeah, listen, uh, if you want, maybe we can work on some other artists together, whatever, but we cannot sign you directly and release the album with you because, um, yeah, you have problems with these guys and these guys are with Sony. So you cannot sign at no label at Sony. And I say, yeah, but isn't, are, aren't we at Universal? Yeah, but we all know each other. And word on the street is you are a very difficult artist to work with and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. So I'm blacklisted. No, you're not. Oh, but, but, all right, let, let me go to Warner. Oh, yeah, listen. Oh, Keisha, yeah, yeah, of course we know. But, uh, you know, uh, such and such are friends. And, uh, nah, no, listen. 
Okay, I'm so I would go to radios in France. And I would try to send them songs. And they would tell me. Oh. Yeah, we love it. Cool. How many times a day are you gonna play it? We're not gonna play it. What? But I I thought you loved it. Yeah, but yeah, you know I me. Mean. Okay, so I got it. At a point I understood. I was blacklisted from everywhere in the microcosm of the little ecosystem of uh, French labels. It was over for me. So what I did, I moved to Belgium and I let music behind me. I moved to Belgium because I realized there was nothing I can do. So I stayed in Belgium for a year, uh, met my the mother of my kid. So that's 2002. Um, and then I, I just, I would just come back to Paris to do some shows and make a little bit of money. And at a point, after a whole one year, two years of reflection, I realized that the only solution I got was to go independent, was to do it by myself without them. Yeah, but I, you cannot reach the same market as them. Yeah, but in reality, if I only make 6% of the money anyway, if I sell 10% of what I sold and make 100%, I would still make more money by myself. So when I came back, I came back with a plan that was different. I came back and I said, ah, listen, I don't need a label. I'm going to be the label. And Sushi Raw was born. And that's when I started climbing my stuff and yeah listen more money more problems i had other problems with other people and every time i was seen seen as a threat by anybody that was bigger than me they would try to stop me they, it didn't work but they still would try anyway all this to say that at that level If you see every American journalist, American TV station, American artists, American beat makers, everybody pretending that they didn't know who Didi was, how, how he was, how unhinged his sexuality was, how he was with women, and they pretend we didn't know Oh my God, I'm oh, I'm shocked, etc. They are all lying. All of them. They are pretending because they don't want to be dragged under the bus with him. They're all like, oh my God, he did this. They all knew. All of them. They all knew about Cassie, about Kim, about everybody else, about the artist. Listen, we've been hearing about him forever. Anybody that lives in New York or that is in the circles in the music business, they know. It's the same thing in Zook music. We know who are the pedos. We know who are the crazy people. We know who are the, 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 the liars. We know who are the people who use religion to, to pretend they are not what they are, the false prophet. We know who are the liars, the the the, the, the robbers. The, 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 we know who's who. And if one day you hear about such and such and everybody pretend they are surprised, you can come to me. I will tell you, finally, the truth is out. But because it's a bunch of hypocrites and they don't want to say, hey, uh, oh, my God. No, they knew all of them. They knew. Put some likes in this video. They knew and put some rainbows in the chat. They all knew. You know what the difference is now? All of a sudden the videos come out and all of a sudden everybody is, is, is the anti-DD party. 
it's not because all of a sudden they want to be righteous the americans righteous the people who are selling bombs that are killing children now nah, listen what is happening right now is that he pissed somebody off somebody that is very powerful and next time you ask <laughs> next time you ask what happened you can say he pissed this guy <laughs> dia geo this is when his trouble started when he didn't understand what was his place that's when all of a sudden they were like all right let's expose you because listen when you work with some people they know exactly who you are they all did their due diligence they know what are your flaws they know what are your your uh your, your 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 defects and they know what are your qualities and they are okay ah, it's all good but the day that they turn against you are they gonna use everything they know against you have you ever been with a guy or a girl that they like tell me all your secrets so you tell them all your secrets but when you guys are fighting they use the secrets against you that's that and yeah that's the reason why didi est dans le pain he pissed off the wrong people and that's why none of his friends are talking none of them because they know that I hope good luck you <laughs> know it's like when I remember <laughs> I wanted to organize a show and to do a tour with a friend and yeah listen we go both of us we do 50 50 whatever and I start speaking with some clubs and some people to try to finance the whole thing and at a point somebody told me yo listen we are willing to finance your tour but not with your friend your friend in our calculation will not generate any money for us now you have another friend here that we want because you and him will generate money and this is the formula we want so if you can have or you alone we give you i don't know that's uh, fake numbers we finance your 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 tour in planes hotels etc at we finance at twenty five thousand, and you make your money from your shows but if you go with this one we finance at 50,000. Now, if you still want to go with your friend here, we will only finance at 10,000 and only your part because this guy, we don't believe that he's going to generate us any money. And now you're like, friendship or money? <laughs> and yo, listen, the market is saying your boy is not to generate the money. So listen, what you going to do? Are you going to bring your boy still or are you going to sacrifice your boy and go with this one? And now you have all these artists. They are very silent because they know that at a point, this guy uh, became too noisy and too much of a problem for the business. So they're like, listen, always follow the money these people don't care and probably they are the ones who help that tape 
go out, but they don't really care about uh, that girl, whatever she felt, like they don't care. All this is perfect to destroy uh, a person. Listen, you do, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve because, yeah, listen, and they know that if you want to destroy your brand and they know that you give a rock, you put it on the hand of black people and they're going to just throw it. So perfect. There you go. The next is Didi. Destroy his legacy. Don't defend him. And are you you not sure? Here's a video. Ooh. Oh yeah, we had it for 10 years. Why well, didn't say nothing for 10 years? Ah, because he was our boy. But now he he pissed us. He pissed us off. And there it is. Yeah. It's all business.